The price of duty. Nilly. I'm good. Help me with him. Oh, he took a beating. Oh man. Let's get this off. Oh. Superpowers. Medical. Got one wounded at my location. Carter. You don't look so good. You gotta be more careful. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Uh, now let's get you down to sick bay. I'm so, so curious to know if, like, how badly that could go. I feel like I made pretty good choices. Status report. Uh oh. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure. Sounds on like time. we made the right choice. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. Oh, we're going to get chewed out. He wanted us to uh, listen to him, follow his orders. You disobeyed my orders. Well, Ugh. respectfully, Captain, I made the right choice given the information. You disobeyed I had my orders, and not just in front of the bridge crew, but the starbase staff as well. That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet, but what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Um, yeah, okay. Maybe we can reason with them. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order, but you were wrong. Oh, no. You weren't on board, and you didn't have all the information. So I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. Okay, that was a pretty good answer. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. Wait, like because we chose the girl woman's suggestion? And if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. Hell yeah. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to, you did what you had to. That'll have to be good enough for me. Thank you for understanding, sir. I'm sure no one knows the burden of command as well as you do. I'm sure you will, someday. Okay, I'm, I'm very happy with Despite how that went. All, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermott, We'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. Oh man, we nailed that. But I do want to say that you can play this game in different ways. It's all about creating your own character, right? It's not there's no right and wrong answer. All I ask is a tall ship. Like if you want to play her as someone that just always follows orders, you could do that, and it's it's totally legit. Game's designed that way. All departments full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate can sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. <laughs> There's actually like the dialogue's really good. Like, I feel for these characters Captain already. On the bridge. It's kind of endearing. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches, 
We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. I also like that the bridge is bright. I noticed in the newer Star Treks, the bridge is like freaking dark. Released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Handar. Oh, here we go. Are we gonna get to like fly the ship or anything like that, I wonder? And that was just the intro, which is, it was a pretty intense intro. I had to make some hard decisions and really quickly too. Hi, Captain. You know what? You take this. Oh, we get to pick our thing or what we say? Me? Oh, do it. <laughs> Helm, do it. <laughs> well, that's kind of a creepy look. Let's see it in the comment section, everybody. Do it! Nicely done. We did it. Can, can I do something else? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I missed it. Easy. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I... Uh... You don't look so good. Oh, the... Uh... Our illness. That's the ring is where, yeah. Deridium monitor ring. It's red. I have to get to sick bay. Go. Commander, help me get her inside. So with all the excitement, we lost track, I guess. Some seriously green eyes. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more, and it would have been one of the shortest tenures on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but he'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. <laughs> My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare, I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet, and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. Hmm. Are we about honor? I'm gonna go with... I know what it means. And I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that or expects something else, then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable That's risks. the science officer that Not we... when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional with, right? opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. Uh. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. 
the major innovation. Oh. Something he can put his name on. The more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. People become blinded by their own ambition. Oh. I've seen it happen before. I hear you. But that's my job, isn't it? To make sure that doesn't happen. And we don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Which is exactly why I'm so glad you're here. We need you now more than ever. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. I feel we didn't have an opportunity to inject ourselves. Understood. Though, right? Then, my work here is done. I knew I should have got the freaking tea. It's probably deridium tea. <laughs> Lieutenant Bedrosian. I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. Mm. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. It's just part of who I am. You don't have to explain to me. I understand. I'm just glad you're okay. You trusted me earlier uh. with the shields, and I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Thank you. Make it friends and enemies. Like literally, she's just gonna f follow now, us. <laughs> the emissions that gave you that burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. That's the combination of hyronolin and lectrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing. She's come by a couple of times to see you already. Be brief. It's good to see you awake again. I was starting to get worried. Not that you aren't in good hands with Dr. Duvall. You did take one hell of a shot, though. Ah, come on. You know you can't get rid of me that easy. Don't push me, Diaz. You do not want to see me try. No, nope. <laughs> I am not getting on your bad side. I am a formidable enemy. <laughs> Millie was looking in on you too, by the way. But since it's just us right now, I... I had a chance to think about this while I was away. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. <laughs> or worse. Leaving it unsaid. Now, this is just a guess, but you like me. Is that what this is? How'd you know? Must have been pretty obvious. Which is funny because kind of came out of nowhere for me at first. I'm a very good guesser. <laughs> well, you know, I was hoping. I guess that makes this a little easier to say. We've been really good friends for a long time. I want to see if there's more between us. Than just being friends. I could feel it. I could feel it earlier. You don't have to explain it. But I feel the same way. There is something between us. But what about so the other friend? Do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, and it's there for me, why not give it a try? I'm all about love. I I am luckless love locks. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I just said yes. I mean, after that, too. I wanted to be sure I heard that right. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the patient needs to rest if he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. I'll see you again soon. I'm also a sucker for a redhead. I feel like after facing death like that, he would probably go for it, right? But once again, you could play that cast adrift. You could play that as just want to be friends, you know. Point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping the impulse. 
Cool. Ionic interference surging, Captain. I love this. I love that we're playing through an episode like a, or a Star Trek movie or holding. We can take episode it. of TNG. We have the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydeck, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. With I can manually craft. tune what's left for Federation signal types. Oh. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Whoa. Out of control. Shuttle to resolute. Shuttle to resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Okay, we gotta pay attention here. We're probably gonna have Losing. to suggest. I can't get it any clearer. A course of action, right? We won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Tractor beam. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Uh. Oof. Maybe not. You sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I didn't say I'm very sure. I'm sure. Come on, Diaz. <laughs> uh -oh. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. Okay. I have to like, I don't know if I have to go around stuff. Maybe I gotta wait, work, work my way through the uh, asteroids. Uh -oh. We're pulling in debris. I'm on it. Flack the asteroids. Okay. Uh oh, they. Gonna hit the shuttlecraft, are they? Very cool. Simple, but uh, it's effective. That's gonna take out the shuttle. The is the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Commander Ryder. Plot an intercept course. On it. Shield the shuttlecraft from the asteroid. Oh, left stick. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Yeah, I like that it's not too complicated, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Not too stressful. Whoa. Someone's working hard on the bridge. But I'm still feeling that excitement. Hell yeah! We got the shuttlecraft on board. Good job. I think We're I might know who the diplomat is. I think I saw some pictures. Spoilers. Firma, so to speak. Ambassador Spock. Uh, rest in peace, Leonard Nimoy. The captain will be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Check out my scar.
<laughs> what if I don't say anything? I'm, I'm just curious. Does anything happen? This is a good time to just... Wait, you have to choose? Yeah. Well, let me be the first to say, welcome to the Resolute, Ambassador. Thank you, Petty Officer. Carter? Carter Diaz, sir. I am pleased to meet you, Petty Officer Carter Diaz. So why is there a, uh, It appears I have you to timer. thank for my safe arrival. Your assistance arrived not a moment too soon, if I may say so. Well, it wasn't all me. I got some help from upstairs. A bombastic approach to clearing debris. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all. Even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. Did say that the storm like started around here, right? Well, this storm is one of the strangest phenomena we've ever encountered. It's disrupted other systems. Or it was heaviest yeah, who knows around what here. It might do to a warp drive. Yes, it would seem further investigation is called for. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer Diaz. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. No high fives? I thought they high fived in uh, Star Trek. Isn't that where the live long and prosper comes from? A provocation to war. Here we go. I like that it's like calm, kind of more character moments. Ambassador Spock. Seems to get heavier as we go my on. My senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. Mm. Your experience comes from the past, but our present situation calls for it. True enough. We were hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed, and the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. What the hell? He's got a bomb! Hotari. <laughs> Illidians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Illidians have shared a mining operation there. Are you, the Illidians provide this down? the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. Uh. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. They want more. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Illidians from their system. That is the official story, as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. Hmm. 
Mm. Have the Illidians retaliated against the Hotari? Or taken any action against them? Surprisingly, they have not yet responded in kind. They were open to a Federation presence, but it is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would stand a chance against the Illidian fleet in open war. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hotari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. Hmm. That is correct. The Hotari just won their independence. It's hard to believe they would give that up just for profit. I agree. It would be exceedingly difficult to bring the Hotari to that position. Neither the Illidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation. So we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Illidians ah. as a source of dilithium. That certainly changes things. The Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. Ah. Uh. We could use that as leverage with the Illidians. They'll want the Federation to continue buying from them. There might be something to that, Commander. Putting that on the table could make the Hotari more hostile. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship, and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Illidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. But they have never been observed on the orders of magnitude we have seen in recent weeks. If it's keeping the two sides talking instead of shooting at each other, that actually helps us negotiate a peace. And we'll take advantage of that as long as it works in our favor. And when it doesn't? All the more reason to learn as much about it as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught unprepared should the energy anomaly continue to fluctuate. So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Hi, Captain. That Thank was the guy that we disagree that we Dismissed. didn't listen to, right? Westbrook. I want to speak to both of you privately. Ah, uh, there's more to this. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. How are we not here in... Commander Rydek could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly goes her own way. Maybe that helps in this case. But how could we it would be unconventional. present ourselves but as I'm not, opposed to it. not being there on official business? I'm perfectly happy to work outside the lines. And by extension, you will be doing your duty, Commander. Just not too far outside the lines. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it. Ho oh, ho ho, the plot thickens.